Good afternoon. I'm Mr. Ish. We're looking here at a video on cylindrical shells and sphere. We're not getting very heavy into the theory behind cylindrical shells because we already know or we assume we know how to do cylindrical shell technique. Very quickly, when you're doing the cylindrical shell technique, your formula will develop from a circumference component, which you know is a 2 pi r, a certain height component and a certain thickness component. And it all will depend on what your line of rotation is and what you are looking with regards to your line of reference. 2 pi r, the 2 pi component can get pushed outside, then you'll have a certain interval which will be involved. This radius component can stay within. You'll have your height component and your thickness component dx. And you know right there that represents a good formula for your cylindrical shell, the various elements that are involved. Your circumference component, your height, and your thickness. The height component here can be yt minus yb, top boundary minus lower boundary, or it can be xr minus xl right boundary minus left boundary based on the orientation of your Riemann rectangles. If you have a certain axis over here and a certain curve which looks like this and your line of rotation is your y-axis, you draw a Riemann rectangle always parallel to your line of rotation and then you look across in a perpendicular manner and you're seeing over here you're looking across in terms of the x-axis dimension. This x-axis feeds very well into the 2 pi r where the r is equal to x and you get 2 pi x and then you know your height component here is your top boundary curve and your lower boundary curve which would be f minus 0 0 is your y equals 0 line your x axis and that's just f your thickness component here would obviously be dx these are the components which would fit in when this Riemann rectangle would rotate around your line of axis it would form a cylindrical shell and I'll try to draw what a cylindrical shell looks like but it would look something like this and then you know it would have this three dimensional component to it which I can try to draw and it would look something very much like this. That right there is your cylindrical shell. From the outside going inwards, these Riemann rectangles would have a certain height to them and they would have a certain cylindrical shell that would result from that rotation of that specific Riemann rectangle. It would be like a bunch of stacking cups. You'll have a representation here which will form in terms of a solid a volume solid because all of these cylindrical shells which would form they would fit within one another until everything is filled up in terms of its space you would cumulatively add up all of the areas of these cylindrical shells as you would in a volume integration where you integrate the area over your interval for your volume and then that would give you your volume of your solid that you're looking at here we're looking at a sphere in this video we're focusing in on a sphere if you take an equation of a unit squ circle x squared plus y squared equals r squared you know it represents something which looks like this but this right here is not a function but if you solve for y you get y is equal to r squared minus x squared and that with a radical then you've converted this into a function it looks like a function and it is a function if you take the same equation you put a minus before it you have r squared minus x squared and then you're looking at exact reflection of it across the x-axis if you do the volume determination of this and you do the volume determination of this and you add them up you'll end up getting here a three-dimensional determination for a sphere and you know your task here would be completed and that's exactly what we're doing in here but we don't have to duplicate efforts in this video we can duplicate to a certain extent but after that we won't need to if you look specifically right over here it would look something like this but if you were to limit in all instances your interval from 0 up to r then you can very well erase all of that you're looking from 0 to r if you were to develop a Riemann rectangle, it would have to be a vertical and you know here our rotational line will be your y-axis which is x equals 0. Then you might as well make a Riemann rectangle always parallel to your line of rotation which is y-axis. Then you look across in a perpendicular manner and that's exactly what you get. When you rotate this Riemann rectangle, you get a cylindrical shell. This right here represents the representation you're seeing over here you know here you'll have a certain circumference which would be 2 pi x you'd have a certain height which would be this function minus your x-axis which is y equals 0 this function is right here your height here would be r squared minus x squared within a radical your thickness here is dx so all of this translates into this 2 pi coming out you're looking from 0 to r you have a x then square root of r squared minus x squared dx and that right there represents what you're seeing right over here with regards to the rotational dynamic which will come into play for this specific representation. And this equation has been done. Now when you look over here for this one, let's draw it out right over here. We're looking at something like this. But when you limit the interval to 0 to r, you're looking at only at this representation 0 to r. 
then of course your line of rotation is still your y-axis x equals zero the Riemann rectangle must be drawn parallel always to your line of rotation you look always across to your Riemann rectangle perpendicular to it and you're still looking in terms of x here for this representation you have a circumference which is 2 pi the radius which is x you have a height over here which is yt your x axis minus your yb your curve here your yt is your x axis which is y equals 0 minus your lower boundary curve which is all of this you have this minus radical r square minus x square and you're seeing all of that come into play which when you open this up you get r square minus x square within the radical your thickness here of course is a dx when you combine all of this into your equation and I'm remembering this in my head I'm bringing this all into my integral form and I'll put it out for you here volume here of course is with regards to x we, we won't skip out on any terminology with regards to x we're bringing out the 2 pi from what I had right here we're looking from 0 to r and I again ended up having this x from your radius component from the circumference and then you had r squared minus x squared dx when you add all of these right here you'll get your volume of the sphere but like I said you don't have to duplicate your efforts this right here in terms of what you had down here will be exactly as what you would see with this function reflected across here into the first quadrant so all you have to do is basically just do this then you can double it or you can multiply it by 2 to cover what you would have gotten from right here so we don't have to do all of this it's just a duplication of effort we can focus in on this and multiply our result by 2 and we will do that so everything we have come up to so far has brought us to this via the cylindrical shell technique it's an easy technique very much in contrast to the washer and the disc method anyhow our focus here is cylindrical shell and sphere when you integrate this we have to integrate it you're thinking about a polynomial substitution technique let u is equal to r square minus x square and then du with regards to your variable which is x is equal to minus 2x dx and dx is equal to du divided by minus 2x but we have a definite integral so our interval must change with regards to this u1 is gonna be r square minus this r square minus 0 square which is just r square u2 will be r square minus x square but here x is r so r square minus r square it will be a 0 all right we have this little times 2 I'm just erasing it and I'm putting it right over here I have to remember at the end to multiply everything by 2 we will rewrite everything here with regards to what we see our interval u1 is now r square and we have a 0 you see how the things have flipped but that's fine everything will self correct as we do this lower limit r square upper limit 0 we have an x we have a root u all of that and then we have a du divided by minus 2x this x can cancel out this minus 2 can cancel out with this and we can bring in a minus pi all right all of that cancels out what we end up seeing is this root u we have a minus pi sitting outside with an r square 0 and then we have a u to the 1 over 2 and du what we can do is use the properties of integrals with regards to their intervals at any point you have something like this you can bring a minus sign and flip it around by bringing in a minus sign I'm really doing minus minus pi and then I'm flipping 0 r square and then I have everything else afterwards that minus which will allow you to flip your intervals around will eliminate this minus and you will be able to flip your intervals around and that right there is a properties of intervals for integrals you can do that and it's a legitimate technique here all you have to do is this polynomial integral right there n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 you have a pi sitting outside you have u to the 3 over 2 over 3 over 2 and then you have an r square and a 0 this 3 over 2 will flip around and attach with the pi and you'll get a 2 pi over 3 think about it 3 over 2 flips around you get a 2 pi divided by 3 you have a u to the power of 3 over 2 r square and a 0 coming in when you have that you'll have r square to the 3 over 2 minus 0 square to the 3 over 2 0 square is meaningless you might as well erase that remember r square comes in and a 0 comes in and you, you do the difference of the two 0 is meaningless you have a r squared to the power of 3 over 2 these 2's cancel out you just end up having an r cube you end up getting a 2 pi r cube over 3 as representing the volume of what would have resulted from a hemisphere 
a hemisphere, half of a sphere. But we still have this times two sitting here. When you multiply it by times two, you get a four over three pi r cube and the volume has been determined for the sphere via the cylindrical shell technique. The volume here with regards to x for the representation we had is the wonderful formula of a sphere. Four over three pi r cube and that brings us to the conclusion of this video. Cylindrical shells and sphere utilizing the compounded approach for the function which was above and for the function which was below and we did not duplicate our efforts. Our main function ended up being this because the other function ended up being this anyways when you did that procedure as I showed you before the minuses cancelled out and it became exact duplication of what you see for this part right here which was the, the portion of your cylindrical shell technique above the x-axis and it was for everything here within the first quadrant. Anyhow, our answer is complete. Our volume derivation here is complete. And thank you for watching this video. Have a good day.